to the quarterbacks, Tyson Bajant. He was the man of interest for Bears fans in this game. 25 of 37, 232 yards, a couple of interceptions in this game. Justin Herbert was phenomenal, especially early on in the contest. Uh, he was for the night 31 of 40, 298 yards and three touchdowns tonight as the Chargers just absolutely dominate this game 30 to 13 the Bears you know scoring late in this one on a short touchdown run by Tyson Bajan Darrington Evans did have a nice third and four touchdown run as well for the Bears when the game was still somewhat in the balance but the Bears lose it two to six I am Mark Grody good evening to everybody as I am in for Mully from the Mully and Haw show you will hear from Mully with Haw tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. or make that from 5 30 a.m. until 10 a.m. but I am lucky to have a couple of former Bears with me here on the Great Clips post game show presented by uh, Telemore Do. We have Patrick Manley and Olin Krutz with us here. Olin, let's start with you. What are your opening thoughts about what happened to the Bears tonight in this 30 to 13 loss to the Chargers? Yeah, we all wondered how real it was, what we saw against the Raiders and what we saw from the defense for three weeks, right? We all wondered. Uh, if they could do that, if they, if they could step up in class, go on the road versus what people consider a top six or seven quarterback in the NFL, even with their receivers out. And we found out tonight the Bears still have a long way to go. And you, you thought that you were excited about Beijing, Pat. We were excited about this secondary. Uh, we learned that Brisker is out. Uh, we knew that Beijing, we knew that people would make adjustments against him, and they sure did. Uh, they took away the, uh, made him throw to the middle of the field, took away his easy throws. Uh, a tough game to watch for the Bears. A lot of hope going into it. And as a Chicago Bear fan, as a Chicago Bear analyst, you come out again thinking, man, we are a long way away from where we need to be. Yeah, Olin, no doubt. And you said it when we were closing up the, um, <clears throat> the pregame show. You said you've seen this before. You know, you couldn't pick mm -hmm. the Bears because you felt like they were going to disappoint us again. And that was. That was disappointing. And you summed it up perfectly. We were excited for three weeks with that defense. And they came out and played a bad game. I mean, the Chargers scored on all four of their drives in the first half. I mean, that's unacceptable. Wow. They had zero sacks. I mean, they had a few pressures, but zero sacks. On how many attempts did he have? 40 attempts? You know, that's just mm – -hmm. you can't win games that way uh, with a quarterback like that. And when you also took <clears throat> their roster and the Bears roster – I had a lot of hope that maybe things were turning for the Bears, but their roster just outclasses the Bears roster with the out, with the athletes and stars they have over there. And it showed tonight on Sunday Night Football, and it is. Olin, it's just disappointing that we get a little bit of hope. We hope they turn the corner a little bit. They go against a two-win team, and they get blown out like that on the road. And it's just, you know, it's disappointing. You know, Tyson Bajan kind of, I think, came back to earth and played like we thought he would play. He didn't play terrible. There's some things he did okay and things he didn't do well. Um, but he kind of played in the middle of the road of what I thought he was going to play. But overall, they just got outclassed. They got outplayed, and they disappointed us again. Yeah, I mean, they, you know <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Olin. Go ahead, man. No, hit, no go it's ahead, just, Olin. you know, they hit Mooney early, right? They hit Mooney early, and you're excited. You think, yep. okay, he did what people said he couldn't do. Right? He threw the ball down the field. Mooney makes a great catch. Uh, beats the DB pretty cleanly. Uh, and then right away, uh, you know, you know, you're wondering about the run game, and, and I didn't think the run game was terrible, but he wasn't getting the yards that got last week, right? He didn't keep him on track. They were in third and long, and we talked about in the pregame show, Pat. You didn't want to be in third and six or more against this defense and end up against that three-edge rush they like to use uh, with their three-edge rushes. I'm talking about Bosa, Mack, and Tui, uh, their draft pick, and, and Bosa beats Cody White here pretty clean there, mm. right? And, and then there's a sack. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we talked about in a pregame about the, the sweep to Tyler Scott last week that they got away with it, right? And, of course, Getsy gives I thought a about you, to man. Trent Taylor. <laughs> right? Like, why are we giving a sweep to Trent Taylor out there? Someone's going to have to explain to me. Maybe, Pat, you can because I don't understand special teams as well as you. What Trent Taylor brings to us as a punt return. I mean, if you catch it and return it and you're just looking for out of bounds, I just don't understand it after a while when I'm watching this game. But, you know... When you watch this team, Pat, to the bigger point, Grody, is this. They don't handle success well, right? Like, enough with the victory laps after one win, right? Enough with the we've arrived. 
We're here to, you know, I remember, Pat, you remember this well also. Ted Washington came over for Buffalo, Buffalo Bills. Although they didn't win the Super Bowl, they did a lot of winning out there. And we won one game after not winning for a while. And we were in the locker room. I think it was week four, Pat, in 2001. And we were cheering like we won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And Ted Washington yelled at us, hey, act like you act like you thought you were going to win this game, right? Act like you've been here before. Don't act like you won a Super Bowl. And what he was telling us is you haven't arrived. We have a lot of work to do. Let's get back to work and stop acting like one win means we're all doing our job well. Yeah, and they, they could not have been sloppier in this game. They were the, the opposite. I mean, I fell for it, Olin. I mean, I was on the pregame show. I was feeling <laughs> good about this game. I was on with both of you guys, and I – I felt like there were some things the Bears might be able to exploit with their offense, and it looked real good when the game started on the on the Bayesian 41-yard pass to which you guys referred uh, to Darnell Mooney to get the game going, and then Bosa just busts up the whole thing. How about the fact, too, I don't even know. I mean, they definitely mentioned it on the television broadcast, but Mooney was never touched after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Mooney could mm -hmm. have... And should have gone into the end zone for six because he just sort of went out of bounds after the defender sort of lightly nudged him out. And they both sort of thought the play was dead, but it wasn't. Yeah, it's unfortunate that the refs blew that. I think they blew it, but yeah. that's not changing the outcome of this game. I don't, yeah. you know, I, I just don't think at the end that that's, that that one play is going to make that big of a difference overall just because – the way the game unfolded, they just got, you know, they got beat everywhere. And the defense couldn't stop anybody. Poor Tariq Stevenson had a really rough game. They kept targeting him all game. I would love to know how many times he was targeted and caught on. It's just not a good game for him. But I just don't think that would have changed the play. But it is unfortunate that these referees, best in the world at what they do, but miss something as blatant as that. Yeah, and then they had the penalties, right? Uh, Lucas Patrick had two of them on one drive. And it's just hard for this offense to overcome that. And like Grody pointed out, uh, they were sloppy coming out. We, we worried about that. And, and that, again, goes to, Pat, like you know, handling success, yep. right? Worried about your details going into your practice on Wednesday like you actually lost the game, right? Like, 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 like somebody at the podium say, look, that was just one win. We are back to work now, right? Like we're, we're done with the victory lap. We got a lot of improvement to do. We're still... You know, we're still two and six or two and seven or whatever we are, right? We don't we don't have the right to celebrate that win against the Raiders. And the Bears have a very clear path to victory in the last two years, right? 170 plus rushing yards and win the turnover battle. Tonight, 73 rushing yards and lost the turnover battle. Uh, they weren't going to beat the Chargers that way. And how about... Uh, uh, the Chargers adjusting to the Bears being a little more aggressive with screens, right? With Eckler mm. hitting him in screens, throwing the ball out there, checking it down, tackling showed up. Uh, you know, Coach Eberflew said last week at the podium, there's no house guests in, in, in our building as far as tackling goes. Oh, a lot of house guests tonight. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was a full house. It was a full house. Yes. The right from the get go on the 39 yard touchdown play from from Herbert to Austin Eckler. T, uh, you guys tell me what ha what happened to T.J. Edwards? Did he just get completely pantsed on that play? Because that was a whiff of all whiffs the way I saw it. I, I thought they, they described it well that Eckler looked healthy because you go back and look at some of those other games. Uh, he's a very special player, obviously, and he just didn't look the same. He looked a lot better, a lot more nimble today, a lot more. Uh, just a lot healthier, and I, I think yeah. that's just a great player beating a good player. But overall, the rest of the team didn't tackle well either. I mean, it was just – it was one of those games, like, it just – it was ugly all around. You know, they had seven penalties. And another one is Cole Komet. I think this is his third or fourth in two games illegal procedure, jumping off sides. You can't have mm. that. This team is not oh. good enough to do that. And we talked about it last week with a, num a young quarterback. Well, how could he do that or how could he handle the team and, and make sure they don't have pre-snap penalties? And they had quite a few of those again. Yeah, and for me, again, guys, not enough DJ Moore, right? Mm. Not enough finding a way to get the ball in his hands. And that, that goes to not only my problem with the sweep, but hand that sweep to DJ Moore, yes. right? Get the ball in his hands more often. Find a way to target him more than six times in the game. And I'm sure that they were taking him away, and I'm sure that they were double-teaming him. But, like, you see uh, uh, the Chargers try to find a way to find Keenan Allen early and often in the first drive to threaten you with him and then go to their screens. And to your point of T.J. Edwards, 
Yep, he got he got beat bad by Austin Eckler, who a lot of people don't want to be in the open field right. with. But my bigger no, that's problem, true. To, yeah. But my bigger problem to your point, Grody, is this: How is no one else even in the vicinity? Right? Yeah. I, I didn't see anybody else in it. Like, where is everybody? And that goes back to Eddie Jackson's not on the field, Brisker's not on the field. You got young safeties out there. I don't know exactly what happened on that play, but I know this: After one guy misses a tackle, it should be a 10 or 12 yard game. It shouldn't be a 40 yard touchdown. I got a question for you guys. How can you suit up for a game, but not play, not be mm-hmm. healthy enough to play? Talking about Eddie, I just don't, there's too many like players doing that now. And it seems like the bears have been doing that a lot. If you're, if you're healthy enough to, to grab a helmet and put shoulder pads on, why can't you play? How are you an emergency guy? I, I don't understand that. That just, that goes back to what I was talking about in the pregame with you all. And that games change a little bit. That's maybe my old school mentality. Yeah. That if you're dressed, you should be able to play, and I, I, I don't, I don't understand that. That's, I guess that's just the easiest way to put it. I don't understand why, if you have a helmet and shoulder pads, why you're not playing. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point by you, and, 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 and you know, you brought that up. It's just uh, usually that if you couldn't play, they wouldn't, pl- they wouldn't yeah. suit you because they need that guy for special teams, mm-hmm. or in case someone gets injured. So it'd be a good question for Coach Eberflus of why Eddie suited up if he could not go out there and play, but I guess he was there for uh, an emergency situation. One guy I do want to say is that Darnell Wright impressed me tonight again. Yes. The way he played, uh, playing with that arm, I I question if he would play uh, even this week after I watched the film last week. He played, he finished the game. Uh, They gave him a little help, obviously, out there against Mack and Bosa. Actually, a lot of help, but he still played good football, came off the ball on on run plays, moved guys out of the way, so uh, credit to him. Uh, you know, even with all these things going wrong, uh, there was one bright spot out there. Yeah, it seems like it seems like Darnell Wright has been developing at about the right rate. Like he hasn't been perfect, obviously, and we've seen mistakes. You know, penalties. Actually, more of the penalties were preseason, but it just feels like this guy's heading in the right direction. Gentlemen, let's let's take some calls here. Three one two six forty four sixty seven sixty seven is the number. If you would like to talk to Patrick Manley, Olin Krutz, me, Mark Grody here on this, the great clips post game show presented by Tullamore Dew. We will be with you until midnight taking your calls and your texts. And then Mike Esposito will be on with you overnight. So we're going to keep this Bears talk rocking all night, all overnight, and then all day tomorrow as well, obviously. Let's begin with Chris in Evanston. Hello, Chris. You are on Chicago Sports Radio 670, the score. Boy, the highs and lows of life, man. Hey, <laughs> y'all. So don't even bring up my call from last week because uh, I'm like everything you guys talking about. I, I drank the Kool-Aid. I knew we were going to come out here with a good game plan. They ran a good game plan last week for the Division II first start in the NFL quarterback. Let's run the ball, play action, keep things simple. This week you come out and you go one-on-one deep on the first play, 41 yards, and what do you come back and do? You put your career punt returner. That's all he's ever done. I don't even think he took the field uh, to line up behind the line of scrimmage this year since we traded for him. And and you put the ball in his hands on a jet sweep. Then it's, it's third and 10, third and 11, uh, three plays later. And you do – who thinks you're going to run the ball? And who cares if you do? I got 11 yards to react to that run. Like – What's going on? This is the problem, and I'm still 100% against Justin Fields. I don't want to see him back on the field or with the Bears, but this is where when you guys talk about it's beyond Justin Fields. Yeah, beyond, beyond. Yeah, sometimes it's actually more than just the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. That is for sure. And I think it goes back in some parts to what Olin was saying, that just because you start to feel a little bit of success – at some point in time, you better be ready for some serious resistance when teams start to think that you think you got something going on. Yeah, and they, they've got a tough stretch coming too. You know, they have Carolina in the middle of it, but you look at they showed the you know the rest of the, the schedule for the season. This could get ugly again. As happy as we were last week, I'm just as down this week because it, it's going to be. I was hoping it wasn't going to be like last season, and now it seems like it's going right back to that. Hopefully, when Justin Fields gets back, he can help. But it just, you know, it was just an ugly game all around. And you just hate when you see 
another football team just dominate the Bears like that. You know, it wasn't oh. even close. I mean, it just – there was not even – you never felt that way that it was I – mean, all right, they complete the 41-yard completion. You're like, all right, nope. And then it turns around, like, no, no, no. They're just better than us today. They're going to beat us bad. You know what's symbolic for me of that, Olin Krutz, and both of you just had mm-hmm. to upset the mentality of both of you guys. The fourth and one, the fourth and one where the Bears had it on their own 29, 352 to go in the third quarter. It's 27 to seven Chargers. Again, fourth and one. That's when Roshan Johnson gets the ball. They pitch it to him, and it was like he hesitated. Like, I put that one on Roshan Johnson. He just did look to me, Olin, like he just didn't hit the hole on that one. And that seemed to be indicative of the mentality tonight that the Bears just weren't winning any battles. Yeah, it's a great point by you. He did jump cut. I look like he missed his aiming point. I don't know. It's hard to see, obviously, from the TV copy exactly what's going on. I know uh, Lucas Patrick got pushed back a little bit, but I thought that Tevin Jenkins and Darnell Wright got enough movement there mm-hmm. on that fourth and one to get a first down. Uh, obviously, we'd have to see the film and ask the Bears, where was Roshan Johnson ex- exactly supposed to hit that? Because uh, I don't know why he'd be behind the center there. But one question I have is I want to ask Khalil Mack, right? How the hell did you know Trent Taylor was getting the ball? Yeah. Like, I would have never guessed they're going to give Trent Taylor the ball. But the first thing I thought, guys, is on the second play of the game, they ran the ball. Remember with Deontay Foreman, he got one yard. But they faked the sweep to Trent Taylor. And I'm watching the game thinking, who even thinks he's going to get the ball? And sure enough, they're getting the ball on the next play, and Khalil Mack knew it. Like, I don't know how you would even know that. But to the caller's point, like, Vilas Jones, you know, Tyler Scott, mm-hmm. Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore. You're giving a handoff to Trent Taylor. Like, I just don't, Pat, I just don't get it. I, I, it's, he's there just to catch punts, and that's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. I think that's why he has a job, to catch punts. I don't know why they're forcing him out there. You've got better athletes out there at the wide receiver position that can run that play. Well, you, like mm-hmm. you said, you have DJ Moore who can break arm tackles. We, we see what he can do with the ball in his yeah. hands. That yes. should be that should be a, if they're going to run that play, just give it to him because even if they think mm-hmm. he might be getting it, he's still probably going to break the tackle. Maybe not Khalil Mack's tackle, but somebody else's tackle. I, that to me, a Trent Taylor. That's again going back to the, the uh, Luke Getzey going into the lab and trying to outthink himself, and that's just that's just not that's that was I, I yeah I, I, that baffles me as well. Yeah, I'll see uh, the 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 flea flicker fake that they threw down. They were, they were penalized. I think that was one of Lucas Patrick's back-to-back penalties at one point in time. Darnell Mooney, the, the wide receiver option on which he eventually just had to, to run the football. So, yeah, he, gets, he, was, he was definitely trying stuff. He was definitely trying stuff, whether he was getting too cute or not. That's uh, that's definitely up for uh, debate. Three one two six forty four sixty seven sixty seven. Let's continue on with uh, this first full rack of calls. John is in Dallas. Hello, John. You are on the score. Hey guys, always enjoy you listening in. Listen, they were not motivated. They they just didn't look prepared on on a prime time. And then why is Jesse and Fields so far apart? Why they not communicating on the sidelines together? Why they don't? They ain't never seen together. There's something wrong there. And my last thing is, let's look for, if we're not going to keep fields, let's just go on trading. And, you know, let's see what this, 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 this other, this other guy, man, he's not, he's a bag up. I'll hang up. All right, thanks for, thanks for the call. I don't think that there's an issue with Fields and Getsy. Let's not stir that. We already did that once. I don't have the energy to go through all of that again, But unless you guys think differently. I, Fields was interesting wearing the shades on the sidelines. I don't know if there was a reason for it. I don't know if you hey, guys. Man, he, he was in L.A. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looked good. <laughs> he looked good. But and he, and All he had you can do headsets. is you, right? That's All you right. can do is you That's out right. there on the sideline. You know, to the caller's point, right, about not being prepared, Pat. And I, I was wondering what you and, and also – Mark, what you think about this, but it's like sometimes in the building, Pat, like you remember when you played, uh, Mm -hmm. like there had to be guys who were just, I don't know, you know, ornery or mad all the time, Mm -hmm. keeping guys on edge and demanding that things are done the right way. And and it has to be done even more after wins, Mm -hmm. right? Even after a big win, even when you know you have this story where people walk by and you just say something just to irritate somebody, (laughs) right? Or maybe start something in practice and make sure everyone knows that the tempo has to be high again. 
We have to be executing. And when I watch these Bears right now, uh, uh, Lawrence Holmes brought up the other week when we were on the post game show together, how would they handle success, right? How would they handle winning football games? And the only thing you can say right now without being in the building, without being around them is, I can only get the results on the field on game day. And you have to say they're not handling it well. Olin, do you remember you used to always say there's too much kumbaya stuff going on? Kumbaya, yeah. You would always kumbaya. say that. like, like, And it's up to the coaches as well to kind of keep that mentality and that edge in the building and maybe make you feel uncomfortable in your meetings or at practice. It can't always be candy, roses, all that, you know, all that stuff all the time. And you're right, Olin. You were one that was very good at that, at taking temperature of the team and making sure there was always like just a little edge there. And then certain coaches would do that. You know, I Tobe would do it every now and then to us in the, in the special teams room. You know, Devin might return something and we have a big game and he would just coach us even harder because he didn't want us to let down or let back and uh, do all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that, that to me, that goes to the players and it also goes to the coaching staff. The coaching staff needs to make it, you know, it doesn't have to be completely uncomfortable, but just make sure guys are, are, are still on things and not letting things slip and slide. And, and then that, to me, is how you handle success. And I guarantee you, when you hear about, like, Bill Belichick, let's go back to Bill Belichick and the Patriots. You talk to those guys that were in that locker room. They won all the time, right? And they said it was still, still uncomfortable all the time. Bel Belichick made it that way. So they had to prepare for each game. You see, 16 weeks back then, for each game, it's this different identity, and they just made it a little uncomfortable in that building, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. I don't know if they're doing that at Hallis Hall, but um, whatever they're doing right now is not working because they, they don't have success.